Hi, hello children. How are you all? Welcome back to my class. Today in this class, we are going to start your new lesson of science that is reproduction in plants. So children, every living organism goes through the cycle of birth, growth and death. Right? If however, all living organisms die after a certain period, how is our earth still full of a variety of living organisms? During their life, living organisms, they give rise to other organisms of their type and the process goes on right so thus even often the death of an organism other organisms of their kind continue to live on the earth and produce offsprings of their kind isn't it so children in this lesson we are going to deal with some of the points that is what is reproduction modes of reproduction then types of reproduction sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction pollination fertilization fruits and seed formation then seed dispersal okay so the first is first let us know what is the meaning of reproduction the production of new individual from their parents is known as reproduction so now just i told you that all living organisms have a characteristics that they can reproduce their own kind right so this re so this production of the offsprings from the parents is called reproduction next is modes of reproduction in plants modes is nothing but the ways okay there are some ways of reproduction in plants so before going to that modes ways first there are some parts of a plant that is called a vegetative part and another is a reproductive parts okay the plants are having two kinds of parts that is vegetative parts and the reproductive parts what is this vegetative parts most plants have root stem and leaves these are called the vegetative parts of a plant so children as you know that the plants they consist of roots stem leaves buds etc isn't it so all these parts like root stem leaves and buds these are called the vegetative parts of a plant so here the plant it reproduces it gives birth to their offspring through their root stem leaves and buds okay so next is reproductive part so children you know that most plants they bear the flowers right after the flowers the flowers will become seeds right so the seeds germinate and form new plants so the flowers perform the functions of the reproduction in plant so flowers are the reproductive parts of a plant so which is a reproductive part of a plant flower is the reproductive part of a plant so the seed germinates and form a new plant so that seed is comes from where it comes from the flower right so the flower is called the reproductive part of a plant so we are having two parts in the plant that is the vegetative parts and next is a reproductive parts from which the plants reproduce okay the second thing is types of reproduction we are having two types of reproduction by which the plants reproduce their offsprings okay so first one is asexual reproduction and the second one is sexual reproduction the first is plants can give rise to new plants without a seed here in the case of asexual re reproduction the plants it do not need a seed okay it don't it do not need a seed for the reproduction this is called the asexual reproduction whereas here in the sexual reproduction the new plants are obtained from the seeds here in the asexual reproduction the plants they can give rise to new plants without a seeds without a seeds but here in the sexual reproduction the plants are obtained only from the seeds here in this process the seeds are needed here it do not need the seeds understood children there are two types of reproduction the first one is a asexual sorry asexual reproduction the second one is a sexual reproduction so now we are going to study one by one the first one is asexual reproduction in that as you know that asexual reproduction here new plants are opened without production of the seeds it do not need the seeds to give birth to their young ones isn't it so here uh, this asexual reproduction again get divided into some of their 
types okay there are some other types of asexual reproduction the first one is a vegetative propagation the first asexual reproduction is a vegetative propagation it's a type of asexual reproduction in which pla new plants are produced from the roots stems leaves and buds it is known as vegetative propagation so here what is this vegetative propagation it's a type of asexual reproduction where the new plants are produced from their vegetative parts right so here the production is through the vegetative parts of the plants such as roots stem leaves and buds so this is called the vegetative propagation for example cutting okay stem cutting in a rose just take an example of rose now children let us do one activity okay cut a branch of a rose with a node you know that what is nodes what are internodes right so the cut a branch of rose with a node then bury that cutting in the soil you have to bury the cutting in the soil next what are the cutting every day and observes growth then you can see that there is a growing of a new rose plants after few days so this is called the stem cutting so cutting is nothing but it is a method in which a cutting from a plant taken and planted in the soil so this is, this cutting is a part of the stem understood children what is vegetative propagation the vegetative propagation through the is through the stem is yes, the cutting the cutting stem so stem cutting understood okay next we'll see the how the vegetative propagation is occur through the buds okay children you must have seen flower buds developing into a flowers right so this flower buds so apart from that flower buds we are having there are some buds in the axil axil in the sense here can you see here yes the axil axil is about the point of attachment of the leaf at the node yes this is a node so this is called the axil so there are some buds in the axil of leaves so which develop into a shoots again so this develop into a shoots again that buds so these birds they work as a vegetative bird so vegetative birds can also give rise to a new plants so this birds which is there in the axil of leaves that will give rise gives rise to a new plant so this is called the bud okay so the next thing is here what is the children yes these are potatoes which we eat isn't it so here can you see here children yes can you see the scars here on this uh, potatoes this scars yes so these are called the eyes of a potato these are called the eyes these are called the eyes of a potato or eye of the this is a single eye eye of the potato or eyes of the potato okay children just do one activity okay let's will do one activity here cut the potato into small portions each with an eye it should have a eyes okay then and bury them in the soil now water it regularly for a few days then you have to observe it so this is a here you can see that there is a growth of new plant so there is a growth of new plant so here these are also called the buds okay these scars which is called the eyes or it is called the buds here what you have to do just cut a um potato we should have a eyes on it okay then you have to bury them in the soil then you have to water that regularly after few days you will find that there is a growing of a new plant here you can see yes so this is in the potato the potato it is yes it is growing through a yes how it is growing through yes it is growing through a buds isn't it the next is we'll see this one okay so children here okay what is this yes this is a bryophyllum you might have heard about this right so this is a leaf of bryophyllum so bryophyllum has a buds in the margins of the leaves these are called the buds of the 
leaves so if this small leaf of this plant fall on a soil so each bud so this is called a bud okay so these called the bud so also called the bud or, or the small leaves if a leaf of this plant will fall on the soil each bud can give rise to a new plant here you can see that a plant okay here the re reproduction is going on through the leaves that is a vegetative propagation the vegetative propagation is occur through the stem root buds and leaves so here we have learned through the first we have learned through the stem then bud then this is through the leaves is yes, through the leaf next is through the roots so the roots of some plants can also give rise to a new plant so the roots of some plants can also give rise to a new plants in the case of sweet potato and dahlia okay this is a dahlia understood children so this is about the vegetative propagation okay next we'll see the next topic that is budding this is a second or this is a second asexual reproduction okay that is budding so children here yeast what is this this is yeast you have learnt about it right so you know that yeast is an organism that contains a single cell it is a single cell organism right it is a fungi right it is a fungi not a plant yeast is a fungi it is not a plant so it can propagate every few hours if the proper amount of nutrients are available to it as the yeast finds favorable condition a okay as the yeast finds favorable condition a small bulb here you can see it's look like a bulb right a small bulb like projection produced from the yeast cell is called a bud so when this yeast gets a favorable condition it starts reproducing okay it start reproduction so a small bulb like structures are start developing from their parent so that is called the bud okay so a small bulb like projections are coming out from the east isn't it so these are called the bud so the bud grows and gets detached it will get grow and it will get detached from the parent cell and form a new yeast cell it will become a new yeast cell okay so here the new yeast cell grows matures and produce more yeast cell. again it will get mature and it will again reproduce another yeast cell and this will get again detached from the parents okay again it will detach from the parent okay not parents it will get, get detached from the yeast cell and it will grow individually independently and it give rise to another yeast cell okay it is a continuous process so sometimes another bud arise from the bud forming a chain of bud sometimes what will happen here the another bud arises from the buds forming a chain of buds can you see a chain of buds this is a continuous process so in this continuous process a large number of yeast cells are produced in a short time so this is about the budding where we find this budding in a yeast cell you know that yeast is a single cell organism yes yeast is a single celled organism understood children okay now we'll move to the another type that is fragmentation okay another one is fragmentation so this is one type of asexual reproduction so children you might have seen a green patches in a pond in a pond okay or as in a stagnant water bodies so these are nothing but the algae these are nothing but the algae okay so when water and proper nutrients are available to this algae it starts growing okay and starts growing and multiplies rapidly by fragmentation 
okay by fragmentation fragments is nothing but the pieces small pieces okay so when they get a favorable condition and proper nutrients they start multiplying rapidly so that is called the fragmentation so here these fragments or a pieces you can see these fragments or pieces grow into a new individuals and again this will get fragmented and again this will become it will undergoes a fragmentation process yes so again it will give rise to a rise to a new offspring isn't it so new individual so these fragments or pieces grow into a new individuals so it is a continuous process and they cover a large area in water in a short period of time you might have seen that green green thing green patches on the water that is nothing but the algae that is called the example for algae is a spirogyra here you can see spirogyra okay so this is an example for fragmentation it will get divide into a pieces very rapidly okay it will get multiply very rapidly so that is called the fragmentation understood chan it is a very fast it is a very rapid process and it's a continuous process so within a short period of time this algae it covers a large area in the water okay so this is about the fragmentation now we'll move to the another topic that is spore formation so children you might have uh, seen that the fungi on a bread piece grow from the spores which are present in the air so when spores are released they keep floating in the air because they are very light and they can cover a long distance okay so a spore has a hard protective cover which protects it from the unfavorable environmental condition like temperature and humidity so this spore is having a hard protective cover which protect this spore here you can see these are the spores can you see here yes these are the small spores round round structures can you see here yes these are the spores so these spores are have a hard protective cover around them okay which protect it from a unfavorable environmental conditions like temperature and humidity okay so as a result the spores can travel long distance and survive for a long duration of time because it is having a hard protective cover so these spores can travel a long distance and survive for a long duration of time so as soon as they find favorable conditions such as moisture and nutrients they germinate and form new plants for example mosses ferns here you can see the reproduction through spore formation in fern this is example for the fern is example for spore formation understood children what is spore formation so as soon as they find favorable condition means these spores they are in the air because they are very light isn't they are very light and they are having a very hard protective cover yes so that's why when they find the favorable condition for them when they get the enough amount of nutrients they will start germinating there itself especially in the bread you might have seen no the uh, blackish or brownish layer on the breads if you kept it for a longer time yes that is nothing but the fungus yes so that is nothing but the spores formation understood children okay now let's move to the another topic so children till then you have learned asexual reproduction and their parts such as vegetative propagation then budding fragmentation spore formation right so now we are going to study about the sexual reproduction so children what is the sexual reproduction sexual reproduction is nothing but the yes sexual reproduction is nothing but the production of a new plants are obtained through the seeds it needs a seeds to reproduce right so here you know that the flowers are the pro reproductive part of a plant what is this children it's a flower and as i told you that the flower it is a reproductive part of a plant so the flowers are the reproductive parts of a plant okay so children here can you see here this one these structures yes so these are called the these are called the stamens 
these are called the stamens you can see these both are called the stamens okay which is there around this green one structure i will tell you later on what is this green one structure okay so these are called the stamens stamens are the male reproductive part of a flower okay stamens are the male reproductive part of a flower you have to remember this okay stamens are the male reproductive part of a flower whereas this green one structure this green one structure these are called the pistils okay this is called the pistil this green structure is called the pistil the pistil is the female reproductive part of a flower okay the pistil is a female reproductive part of a flower so children here what is this yes it is stamen what is the stamen yes stamens are the male reproductive part of a plant isn't it so here children this uh, it consists a anther and a filament so this is called the anther and this is called the filament here you can see is so this is called the this green one is called the filament and this structure the upper structure is called the anther okay here it is there this is filament and this is the anther and this anther contains pollen grains which produce male gametes so this are the here this anther it consists pollen grains these pollen grains are the male gametes okay so these pollen grains which produce male gametes okay these are the male gametes understood children so this is the stamen stamen is the male reproductive part of a flower or a plant and anther it contains the pollen grains which which produce male gametes this is about the stamen next one is a pistil so children pistil is the female reproductive part of a plant a pistil consists of stigma style and ovary here you can see this upper structure the low black structure it is called stigma and this straight one structure is called style and this structure is called the ovary and this structure is called the ovary here you can see in the flower okay i will show you here this one this this is called the stigma and this line is called the style and this structure is called the ovary and this ovary it consists a ovules okay this ovary it contains one or more ovules you can see it consists of ovules means it is a x ovules is nothing but the x can you see here the round round structures is yes, these are called the ovules so this ovary it contains one or more ovules so the female gametes or the x is formed in an oval so here okay and the, in this oval in this ovary the male gametes or the x is formed in an oval understood children okay so these are the reproductive part of a flower uh, plant which is a reproductive part of a plant flower okay and here this is a stamens and the pistil understood children okay now we'll move to the another topic types of flowers we are having two types of flowers that is unisexual flower and the second one is a bisexual flower okay first let us know what is this unisexual flowers flowers which contains either only pistil or only stamens are called unisexual flower the flowers which contains suppose this is a flower for example papaya corn and cucumber okay so here for example papaya the only the flower the single flower should contain either pistil or stamen here you can see this is a one flower of a papaya it consists only a stamen yes it consists of only stamen yes so here is another flower of papaya it consists only a pistil okay so flower which contains unisexual uni means single so flowers which contains either only pistil or only stamens are called a unisexual flower the second one is a flowers which contains both stamens and pistil are called bisexual flowers a single flower must should have a both the uh this thing reproductive part that is stamens and the pistil 
okay for example mustard rose and petunia for example datura also you can take a example of datura okay in the datura here you can see the middle one this is a middle one line is there the single line can you see the single line children here yes the single line this is the pistil whereas here the around it is having a stamens so here you can see that this flower this flower of datura it consists both stamens and pistil whereas here the flower of one flower of papaya it consists a pistil another flower of papaya it consists a stamens understood what is unisexual flower flowers which contains either only pistil or only stamen these are called unisexual flowers for example corn papaya and cucumber okay and flowers which contain both stamens and pistil are called bisexual flower understood so for example the datura mustard rose etc okay the next thing is okay children this is our next interesting topic that is pollination first let us know what is this pollination the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma of a flower is called pollination till then you have learned what is pollen grains where it is formed the pollen grains is formed in the anther it is a anther it is a part of stem and stem is a male reproductive part of a flower isn't it so the pollens which are present in the anther so that pollens they travel or they get transfer from the anther to the stigma of a flower anther anther what is this the anther is a part of stamen stamen is a male yes male reproductive part isn't it and here stigma stigma is a part of a pistil pistil is a what yes it's a female reproductive part of a flower so the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma of a flower is called a pollination so children so how this pollination is occur these pollen grains have a tough protective coat the small pollen grains as i here i have showed you the pollen grains so here these pollen grains here can you see this the small round round structures yes these are pollens right so these pollen grains have a tough protective coat this is having a very tough protective coat which prevents them from drying up it will not get dry easily okay so pollen grains they are very light they can be carried by the wind they can be carried by the wind or um, through the water or through the insects okay so these pollen grains they are having a very hard coat and they are very light so that they, it can easily fly in the air so it can be uh, transfer through the wind water and insects okay so children some of those pollens land on the stigma of a flower of the same kind so the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma of a flower is called the pollination understood so the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma of a flower is called pollination so there are two types of pollination first one is a self pollination another one is a cross pollination first let us know what is the self pollination self pollination means if the pollen lands on the stigma of the same flower stigma of the same flower or another flower of the same plant it is called self pollination children listen here carefully if the pollen lands on the stigma if that pollen small pollen if they land on the stigma of the same flower these are the what is this these are the yes these are the stamens which consist of pollen right so here you can see so first line is if the pollen lands on the stigma of the same flower from here to here this is the same one flower okay it is just transferring from anther to the stigma of a same flower this is only one flower right the second thing is or another flower of the same plant the plant should be same here this is a single plant which is consists of two flowers here you can see in the first case the pollen lands on the stigma of the same flower in here and another case is that another flower of the same plant from here to here it may be from here to here from here it may be from here to here
okay so if the pollen lands on the stigma of the same flower or another flower of the same plant so that is called the self pollination it will not go outside okay it is called self pollination okay the second type is cross pollination here when the pollen of a flower lands on the stigma of a flower of a different plant from the same kind it is called cross pollination when the pollen of a flower lands on the stigma of a flower of a different plant but the plant should be of same kind if it is a hibiscus it should also be a hibiscus okay but it of a different plant this is plant number 1 and this is plant number Two. Here you can see that the pollens are landing on the stigma of a another flower, but of the same kind. This is the pollens that are traveling to a stigma of another flower of the same. This is also hibiscus. This is also hibiscus. They are both the same kind of a flower, right? So from here, uh, the pollens are traveling from here to here. Yes. So this is called the cross pollination. So when the pollens of a flower lands on the stigma of a flower of a different plant but of the same kind it is called the cross pollination here in the self pollination the pollen lands on the stigma of the same flower here you can see same flower or the flower of the same plant same plant but here the plant should be different but it is of same kind if it is hibiscus it should also be hibiscus if it is rose it should also be a rose okay so this is called the cross pollination and this is the self pollination understood children okay now let's move to the another topic that is fertilization this is another very interesting topic of this lesson that is fertilization first let us know what is this fertilization means the process of it is a process okay the process of fusion of male and female gametes fusion mix mixing okay the process of fusion of male and female gametes to form zygote is called a fertilization so the process of fusion of male and female gametes is called the fertilization so how it is occur i will tell you so as you know that pollination what is pollination the transfer of pollen from the anther to the stigma of a flower is called pollination right once the pollen grain is land on the stigma of a flower okay many of the pollen grains will land on the stigma uh, stigma of a flower but only one of the uh, pollen grain it will start germinating okay so it will start germinating and it will form a pollen tube here you can see this is a pollen tube can you see here yes so this is a pollen tube so as you know that this pollen grain it consists what it consists of male gametes right so once this pollen tube will reach to this ovary okay ovary it will uh, release that male gamete in the, through this pollen tube and that will reach to the ovary here you can see yes oh um. so afterwards the cell which results after the fusion here you can see this is a female one this is a female one this is a male one this is a fusion of male and female right so the cell which results after fusion of the male and the female gametes is form is called a zygote here the cell which results after the fusion of the gametes is called the zygote here there is a formation of the zygote okay so the process of fusion of male and female gametes to form a zygote is called the fertilization and this zygote and this zygote develops into an embryo embryo is nothing but it is the part of a seed that contains the uh, earliest form of the plants like root stem leaves etc okay so which you are going to study in your higher classes understood children what is fertilization so here the cell which results after the fusion of the gamete is called a zygote okay have you understood how this fertilization occurs once the pollen is land on the stigma of a flower it will germinate into it will germinate and gives rise to a pollen tube okay and that pollen tube will reach to the ovary okay and that pollen it will release out the 
male gamete and that will reach to a here in the ovary so that fusion of male and female gametes is called the fertilization okay now we'll move to the another topic that is fruits and seed formation so how this fruits and seed will get formed we'll discuss okay after the fertilization that ovary grows into a, that this ovary after the fertilization there is a formation of zygote here right so this ovary it grows into a fruit this will become a fruit and other parts of the flower will fall off it consists of petals sepals and all right so it will fall off the fruit is so whatever the fruit will remain no that is the nothing but it is a ripened ovary ovary that is a ovary okay the fruit whatever the fruit we eat that is nothing but it is a ripened ovary so the seed develops from the ovule the seed develops from the ovules so here as in the first one first only i have told you that here that ovary it consists what it consists ovules here i have told you right it consists of ovules so that uh, ovules develop into seeds after the fertilization okay so the seeds will de uh, sorry uh, yes the seeds develop from the ovules after fertilization okay so next is the seed contains an embryo enclosed in the protective seed coat and the seed and the seed whatever the seed will get no so that seed it contains an embryo as now just i told you what is embryo right so it consists a embryo enclosed in the protective seed coat suppose it's a seed coat and it consists a embryo within it okay some fruits are fleshy and juicy whereas some are hard you might have seen some fruits are they may be fleshy juicy very sweet and some may be a they are very hard yes so uh, fleshy or uh, fru uh, fleshy or juicy uh, juicy uh, fruits such as mango oranges etc right uh, and some fruits which are hard like almond walnut etc okay these are the examples for some of the fruits understood you know how these fruits and seeds are formed it is formed after the fertilization and here where the seeds develop from the ovules okay so the next is seed dispersal what is this dispersal means dispersal is nothing but the spreading scattering okay disperse dispersing is nothing but the spreading so children uh, here first point is the seeds are dispersed to different places so as we know that the same kind of plants grow at different places is why does happen because seeds are they are getting spread to different places they are dispersed to different places so time sometimes what will happen after a walk through a field or a park you may have, may have found seeds or fruits sticking or clinging on your dress okay so when you walk from there it will uh, fall from your dress or and it will start growing there okay they have changed their place isn't it this is one thing the second thing is that what will happen if seeds of a plants were to fall at the same place and grow there all the seeds instead of dispersing if all the seeds uh, start planting in that place only what will happen yes so if all the seeds of a plant were fall at the same place there would be severe competition for sunlight water minerals and space as a result the seeds would not grow into healthy plants so if all the seeds are fall on the same place and they'll start growing they will not get the sufficient amount of the sunlight water minerals and space yes they will not get the place to grow there will be a very hard competition among those plants isn't it they will not grow into a healthy plant they will not grow well so uh, that's why the plants benefits by seed dispersal so this is why the seed dispersal is necessary it is very necessary to grow the plants okay it prevents competition between the plants and its own seedlings for sunlight water and minerals yes so children why uh, why this uh, dispersal is needed so that in the second point as i told you that there is a hard competition between the plants 
right for the sunlight water mineral space etc so because of the dispersal of the seeds it can be prevent the competition among those plants so it gets their own sunlight water minerals etc okay next is it also enables the plants to invade new habitats for wider distribution invade is nothing but move so uh, what is one more benefited of this dispersal of seeds is that it makes the plants to move from a new habitat new place okay and there will be a wider distribution next is seeds and fruits of a plants are carried away by wind water and animals how this seed dispersals occur first just i told you that if you walk through a field or a park the some seeds may be sticking or clinging on your dress this is the first thing the second thing is that it is carried away by the wind it is carried away by the water and from the animal how this is happened the first is winged seeds okay so the seeds are how uh, the first is that here let us see winds okay how the seeds is dispersed through the wind especially the winged seeds which is having the wing okay winged seeds like this which is having a wing so these are the seeds uh, for example uh, in the case of drumstick you can take a drumstick or a maple or you can take a hairy fruit of a sunflower or as you can take a arc okay so these are the some uh, winged seeds which can be carried away by the wind okay for the seed dispersal the next is that through the water these fruits or seeds usually develop floating ability in the form of spongy or fibrous outer coat as in the case of coconut so some seeds are dispersed by the water for example coconut because these fruits are usually they develop in a they are having a floating ability to form the spongy or fibrous outer coat for example coconut it is having have you seen their outer coat how it is it is very fibrous that will help it help it to flow okay next is some seed dispersed by animals the some seeds they are getting dispersed by the animals for example xanthium can you see here this is example for xanthium because especially the spiny seeds spines which is having the spines especially the spiny seeds uh, with hooks which gets attached to the bodies of animals and are carried to distant places okay so for example xanthium and urena okay children the next is some seeds are dispersed when the fruit burst with sudden jerk so there are some of the seeds that are scattered means they are spreaded far from the parent plant because of there are some fruits that will burst they will get open with the sudden jerk so the force of that it will scatter far from the parent plant for example in the case of castor you might have seen this type of uh, plant right in the case of castor these are castor seeds and next one is a blossom flowers okay these are the seeds so these in the in the both case in the castor as well as blossom this is the method of or this is a way of seed dispersal okay here the seeds are dispersed when the fruit is burst with a sudden jerk understood children so children in this lesson you have learned what is reproduction modes of reproduction then types of reproduction asexual reproduction sexual reproduction and the types of asexual reproduction then what is pollination then what is uh, types of flowers sorry not types of flowers yes types of flowers you have learned right unisexual flower then bisexual flowers then you have learned how the sexual reproduction occur in the flower then you have learned the pollination then you have learned what is fertilization process then fruits and seed formation then how seeds disperse right so hope you understood all the concepts very well children okay